Good evening and welcome to Trek This Week. I'm your host, Sean Fernelli. With me is Lance Harrison and Davis Caperton. Hello. Tonight we will be reviewing the episode, The Inner Light. In this episode, the Enterprise encounters a mysterious probe. Picard is struck down by the probe and wakes up in another reality. On the planet Catan, Picard is known as Cayman and he has a wife. He ponders the nature of his situation, but to no avail. Meanwhile, on the Enterprise, Riker and company try to revive Picard, also to no avail. Picard Cayman remembers everything of his Enterprise life, but is eventually resigned to his new life. The planet Catan is slowly dying, and not even the knowledge Picard has about the 24th century technology can avert complete disaster. He and his wife have children and grow old together. When he ultimately revives, we learn that in the span of 20 minutes, Picard has experienced another person's entire life. Okay, well, what do we think about this episode, Davis? Um, deep. It was deep. They say that still waters run deep. Yeah. Now, does deep mean boring, Lance? Well, in this case, it, I first thought it was pretty boring, but it's just another one of those examples of Roddenberry's Pollyannish view of the future. Everything works out hunky-dory. Well, he's dead. You think he was around for this episode? No. Well, then well, I'm not just sure. Just I'm, not sure. Lives on. I'm not certain that he was here for the episode. But it's oh, we're not certain he, was. he wasn't. Okay. All right. He probably had something to do with the story, though. Uh, okay, that's possible. I think it was um, a case for getting Patrick Stewart an Emmy. I think that's what this whole episode was oh, about. We, thought, we think Patrick Stewart deserves an Emmy, and we're going to write him an episode to get him one. Uh, that's what they've been doing for the last three years. <laughs> well, <laughs> Every other episode is an episode to get him a nomination. It hasn't least. worked. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked so far. That's right. But it should have. It only hasn't worked because the Academy is snobbish towards science fiction, uh -huh. not because he doesn't deserve one. So That's they right. keep writing these episodes and giving him a lot of uh, stuff to chew on every episode. Mm -hmm. Well, what? Have, okay, fine. D did you like the episode or not? Not really. I did. I did. You did like it. I Lance, did. you didn't like it. I personally liked it. When I first watched it, I was sitting there going, this is a very slow episode. I, I, I can't understand. I, I guess I'm like every other person out there, or most people out there. I like the big action battle sequences where they use a lot of high-tech computer animation and graphics, and I like seeing ships blown up and parts strewn about and blood and guts and gore, but that's not what this episode was about. Star Trek II had infinitum. Yes, that's right. Um, I don't have to see that every episode. It doesn't have to... Uh, right, well... Like, uh, like, like you're saying, I but, you ended know, up enjoying it after the. I, I like the PBS too, so I guess you know. Oh. I guess that's that's me. Now you know. Not all of us have to have explosions and uh, you know gun battles every episode. Sure. Well, the second time through, t you know, to be honest, I thought that it was a great episode. Uh, there, I found that there were a lot of things to think about and a lot of things to talk about in this episode. Um, starting with. Uh, Picard and a family. We've never seen, we've never thought of Picard as a family man. All captains of ships seem to be married to their their ship. Mm -hmm. And in this episode, uh, Picard has no way back to his ship, and so he resigns himself to being married and has two kids, and a grandchild, too. What do you think about that? It's new for Picard. It was kind of neat to see him actually playing uh, a family man, a father figure, but at the same time, it wasn't that great. It just seemed like we were supposed to see this. It was just like uh, a setup job. You thought it was too... To get us to feel a little more sympathetic towards the card. Too connived. Yeah, yeah, too contrived. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it, they wrote that to stretch Patrick Stewart's acting ability and to show the evolution of the character of, of Jean-Luc Picard. I don't know. If he's already a Shakespearean actor, it's kind of hard to stretch him into something as small as this. Stretch him for the, for the Academy of Television Sciences. Uh, minutes, back, right? back to that, that Emmy where he's supposed to win. Yeah, well, at least a nomination. But then Jean-Luc Picard, his character, is stretched now. From the first episode in Encounter in Farpoint, where he uh, really he can't stand children to be around them, and now Picard, the grandfather and the father. Natalie. It does. It does seem as if Picard has come full cycle. Uh, we saw him, in effect, grow old, mm -hmm. and to experience. He has an additional what 40 years life experience behind him now. Mm -hmm. Does he really? W did he experience that in real time, or did he just experience the selective portions that we saw? Was was he asleep oh, one morning? Sleep one night, wake up next the next morning, and he's you know forty years older, and, and his wife is grayed and everything, and he just doesn't remember it. Or did he actually experience all the time in between the portions that we saw? 
In his mind, I think that he did. I agree. I think he experienced every second of uh, Cayman's existence. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think that that's pretty? The case although or? that's pretty a far-fetched achievement for those people who couldn't even get off their own little rock. Yes. Well, there are several inconsistencies in this episode. That the least. Well, but is. what we saw was uh, throughout everything that they showed us about them is they had different levels of advancement in their different technologies. They didn't evolve the same way scientifically that we did. Mm -hmm. They had doors that opened with, with buttons and things and you didn't have to open them. And they had lights and things, but they, I didn't see any motor cars. I didn't see any television no lights, sets. No motor cars. Yeah. Not a single luxury. <laughs> so they, they, they didn't evolve exactly the same way we did. But mm -hmm. why should every culture have that same evolution of, of technology? They, they came up with different discoveries at earlier points or later points, which completely had, had complete different paradigm shifts on, on, on how their technology would go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how would they develop something as advanced as the probe that could manipulate a person's um, memories and probably even their, um, maybe, what is it? The, me the molecular processes that uh, influence memory. How could they, well, they develop something as advanced as that? They went along the lines of psionic development instead of instead of uh, the more instead of developing uh, fossil burning fuels. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe they had no uh, dinosaurs. Yeah, that's right. Hey, we don't that, know. that would be something. They're, w that what their you know what their planet the the rocks that their planet consists of would determine a lot of their technological. No development. shale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting back to Picard and the children uh, that he had, um, I, I kind of wonder what Picard is going to do now. I do too. I think what they, effect is this going to have on to him? To be completely logical, I think they should write him off the show. And he should uh, you know, sit down and, and take a family. Mm -hmm. Because he said in the, uh, in the episode, as Cayman, he goes, I never realized how empty my life was without children mm -hmm. until now when I have them. Well, mm -hmm. there, okay, here's a couple of, of suggestions for ways he could go. Picard could say, all right, I gotta have a family. That's more important than starship life. So I'm gonna go kill that ambassador on that planet or whatever and take the perfect mate back. What was her name? I forget. I forget. Well, okay. Anyway, but that's, that's one way. That's his true love here. Okay. Or he could say, well, that's too difficult. Bev, how about you and me, huh? I uh, don't even have to give up a star Starfleet career. We're on the same ship. What about the archaeologist that he's dallied with a time or two? Oh, she's off gallivanting around the universe with Q. Well, she'd come back for Picard. Maybe. We have to see Q again, and when we see Q again, we have to find out what happened to her. Uh huh. So maybe we hope. Yeah. Another uh, question I want to. I'm wondering. Oh, wait a second. Before you go on, I think that with this experience, Picard would simply say, "Okay, now that I've experienced what it's like to have a family, I don't and need children, it anymore. <laughs> right? I don't need to have them. I can cherish the memories that I have." Okay. Good point. Now the other side of it is that that we're, we've so far we've talked about Picard's voluntary decision as about whether or not to leave Starfleet or raise a family. Mm -hmm. What about the involuntary decision? Once again, I believe Picard comes across as the, wink, the weak link in the Federation. I mean, how many times has this man been taken over, manipulated, sent to another part of the galaxy, this, that, the other thing? Why did the probe pick him? I know why. I figured it out. Oh, yeah? Why? Did you notice that uh, Cayman's son... Because he was standing right in front of the window, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice that uh, Cayman's son, Bataille, <laughs> had the same hair loss pattern as Picard. <laughs> it was programmed to search out someone with the same hair loss pattern. Wait, wait, wait but <laughs> was that a real person he jumped into? Yes. Or was this just something that was, co that a he, family he, that was completely created into, for him? That he leapt into. This okay, was the quantum leap. What episode. happened to the real man that he leapt into? Was there, or? Juxtaposition. He looked exactly like Picard. This probe was made to go and search out the identical match. Oh, come on. Okay, fine. That's, that's stretching it. That's not... I don't believe that. Kind of like he's his own father? Yeah, my own grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm joking when I say that he had the same hair loss pattern, and that's the reason but, why. But is this family, was this a real family? I believe it was a real family, and not, I mean, I guess... Or did they just look, insert a dream into You could look at the other head. side and say it was uh, an amalgamation, or uh, if you will, of, uh, you know, a compilation of several different identities mm -hmm. and personalities and people, mm -hmm. uh, all kind of rolled into one to give it uh, the widest possible base for the culture. Mm -hmm. um, but I disagree. Well, I we saw a couple of black folks in there, and uh, yeah, but well, not in his family, though. Why mm -hmm. didn't he have a black wife if they wanted to get a juxtaposition, or if they wanted an amalgamation I, of all I, the I, well, all know. the cultures? I well, know. You know, I don't think that's true, though. I think that that was a specific family, 
and he leapt into a specific person. So then what did they do with the person? Where, where was he during this entire... He wasn't in Picard like on... He was know, already dead. He was already dead. They, oh, they took dead. his memories. They took the RNA All right. when so, he was old. Yeah, so this isn't quite like Quantum Leap then? No. no. Well, no, it's not quite like he's Quantum He's not going to displace the person's soul or no. his consciousness while he's uh, inhabiting the body. Nor is it quite like Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. There's uh -huh. no place like home. Close, but not there. Well, you know, Nor is it like Superman the movie. All right, all right, all right. Where uh, Jor-El sends baby Kal-El off to freedom, off to safety. Actually, it did seem like it was going in that direction for quite <laughs> yes, a while. Yes, it did. I, I saw a lot of similarities. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we trying to imitate Quantum Leap? Are we trying to imitate Superman? What, what are we ripping off here? Come Maybe on. all three, but... I. They didn't have uh, Dean Stockwell on the on the holodeck, and, um, and that would have been great. Picard. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam Beckett has never stayed in anybody's uh, life for thirty years, forty years. So you know what would have been great is if the moment Picard woke up in uh, Elaine's arms, if he had said, "Oh boy." <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been great. But what did he say when uh, he says? Computer in program. <laughs> yes. Even better. Yes, that was great. You know, I think uh, Picard, um, okay, he comes back now and he wants a family, but I'll bet he's had a vasectomy that he's going to have to reverse or something. I hope oh, they have that. You, I hope they have that. that. Yes, he hates children. Yeah, so. Oh, you're saying because he never gets any that he wouldn't have had. Is that what you're saying? Male pill. <laughs> Well, let's see where the technology's gone. It, it, are, do they have reverse Come on. They can, do they have they the can revive in the dwarf by replacing his spinal cord. Uh -huh. I think they can create a male okay. pill. <laughs> well, what the birth control in the 24th century is a matter of uh, six-month injections or something. I read one of the books. Oh, really? Not even six what months. I don't remember. I, oh, we, right now we have the uh, Norplant in five years. Yes, 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 yes. But this is more reliable and no side effects. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I really want to get back to this. What, no if, surgery. what about Picard as the weak link of Starfleet? I mean, don't you think they should have booted him out? Uh, we discussed before about how we think Selah should be tossed out of the Romulan Empire for her many failures. Mm -hmm. Well, Picard is little more effective. Well, that's why they keep him on the lunatic fringe on the very borders <laughs> of Federation space. And so he gets lost. we've turned this great oh, well. John Luke Picard episode where he really shows the 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 talent that he has that he can go from uh, from one age and then go through all these all this aging process and have all these uh, interplay with all these characters and we turn that beautiful episode into let's bash Picard episode number 53 <laughs> yeah, but he did play a very old man very effectively <coughs> he did he played the whole range of the, the whole spectrum very did. effectively I so let's stop bashing Picard I was particularly impressed with his portrayal uh, at the end um, when he played the old man he was informed as to the real nature of the life that had just gone on. We can take a look at that. A good it'll do. What is it they're launching? You know about it, Father. You've already seen it. Seen it? What are you talking about? I haven't seen any missile. Yes, you have, old friend. Don't you remember? saw it just before you came here. We hoped our probe would encounter someone in the future. Someone who could be a teacher. Someone who could tell the others about us. Oh, oh it's me. Isn't it? I'm the someone. I'm the one it finds. Well, wasn't that great? I thought that was great acting by Picard. I thought it was, too. Yeah, I thought that um, his surprise and his, you know, seeing his old friend, uh, I, I just thought that was a great depth of acting by Patrick Stewart. That really, that yeah. scene was, was what would convince me if I were the, on this, one of the Any judges. Panel? Well, you, we, we saw with Picard that, okay, first of all, this was kind of a cruel trick they pulled on Picard. First of all, when, he's, when he first wakes up there and everything, he, he and, and then first has to come to the realization <coughs> that he's stuck there forever and he's not going to get back. Um, and he gives up pretty easy, doesn't he? 
Um, After five years, yeah. <laughs> well, Kirk would have never given up, but anyway. <laughs> so he, he <laughs> Kirk would have been assigned to a loony bin, too. <laughs> the whole 40 years, Kirk would have been just trying to figure out how to, how to get some rocket to send him back up there. Or yes, something. he would have been Where's my rocket? communicator, damn it? <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh. Kirk would never have given up. That's right. He would never have given up. Um, so anyway, but, but Picard has to come to the realization that he's lost all the people he knows, he'll never see them again. And then he gains a new family, new friends, and as he gets older, he starts seeing them kick off too. And then at the end, he's so happy to see those people still alive. And I think that was he's great happy emotion to, for He's them. happy to see these people still alive than he is to get back to the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah that's true. Did he's spent more time with them than he has agreed. with the people Oh, the agreed, Enterprise. definitely. Did you notice when he's walked off the bridge, how feeble he looks? No, I didn't. Yeah, they kind of walk him off the bridge, and he looks like an old man who doesn't know where he is. And granted, that's what he well, was just was. He's still stuck in the old man. That's what he was five yeah, minutes ago. He's got to learn that these muscles still work, you know? I just think he comes across as being very weak to his crew in that instance. Well, they Again, don't. with my weak leak of the... Well, that would be... Yeah, that would him in the back and take over. Well, huh, that, yeah, if they, were on the, uh, if, in the, if they were in the mirror universe or on a, on a Klingon ship, that would be a danger. But <laughs> these guys, all I, and it's not a, they, they've seen him with, with it's parts not a, of his body pulled out and replaced with yeah, mechanical structures. Yeah, well, he won't, be, a, he won't be any physical danger as a result of this, but I think that uh, you know, people will start to maybe question his faculties. Oh, mm -hmm. if they didn't question his faculties after the uh, Borg episode where he's... Agreed. They should have, he should have been on a forced uh, vacation or something for a long time after that. He should have been assigned to a desk for that. Yeah. I mean, it's just there's no way that Picard should still be jockeying around space. Wait, wait, wait. Now, how many times... He should join the Admiralty and that, leave it at that. How many Looks times like Kirk. did Kirk get um, either... Well, not taken over, but have a replacement Kirk. They should have, I mean, there was always some double, some Kirk double coming, on, coming along. But that, they that wasn't known, Kirk's I know it wasn't, problem. But, but, but the thing is, they should have never known if they could trust this Kirk or not. How do they, I mean, they, every time he comes on the bridge, they'll be saying, is this another replacement, another imposter? You know, just last week there was an imposter Kirk. How can I trust this guy? How do I know it's really him? Paranoia um, was cured by that time. Paranoia will destroy you, as they say. No, I don't know. Yes. If 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 you were there, you mean you wouldn't be questioning that? I don't know what I'd question. Every other week, there's a different Kirk. This takes place I, over five years. That would years. create this, new paranoia. We, there were what seventy three episodes. Um, I don't know about that. Live action of uh -huh. the old series. So this takes place like wait, maybe there were seventy days. Wait, there were seventy three episodes. Yeah, that takes place taking place over a five year period. I thought a three year period. Five year period? Three years. The, well, anima the animated episode did not place finish in off the, the two last years. Yes, they did. No, the, yes, they, they jumped around. They jumped around. They did not have the Catwoman and and the three armed guy in the in the first three years of the uh, show. Well, we and knew if, that. And if you were to believe me, they never had them. The animated but they series did. does not exist. It, it does. Face reality. It's there. You can't change no. it. It is considered by some to be part no, of the I, I have no problem, but I still think that these people were just crew that were rotated in and out of their shifts, mm -hmm. and we saw them on their shifts in the animated series, whereas we were Do you have facts to establish okay, this? Okay, let me ask no. you this. I think there are let books which this. tell that they came on in the last two years. Oh, great. The books. The all-knowing authority. I want to ask right. you this. Was Ahura there at the end of the five-year period? I guess, yeah. Well, in, did you read the, the, the Lost Years? First book? After the uh, the f end of their first five year mission, she was there, wasn't she? She was there. Right. Okay. Where was she in the last two years on the animated series? She just shows up on the ship to complete the docking procedure. <laughs> I don't think so. So why didn't we see her the, during the whole last two years? Was she Wait, sick? She was in some was of those. Was she pregnant? She was in the animated years? episodes. No, oh, fine. Yes, she was. Why? What about the what about the one where the uh, the siren call and uh, all the men get called upon the uh, uh, to the uh, I don't know to this planet and Uhura to the rescue and she's yeah she was in the okay, animated you one. guys just haven't that's watched one. the animated shows was that's the Catwoman the the communications officer uh, yes she was they have more than one communications officer not in the live action yes, series but the Catwoman the Cation did take well, the place uh, uh, in, in the, the live animated. action series Uhura stayed up twenty four hours a day and it ran so they would have you believe board. right. No, she didn't. She slept. And when she slept, the, the Catwoman took her place, right. which we saw in the animated series. Sure, sure. Okay, fine. That doesn't, your point does not negate my point that the Catwoman came on later. Just because they had to have a replacement uh, for Ahura does not mean that it was the Catwoman. Agreed, was, agreed. But we have no evidence to say that the Catwoman hadn't been there all along. And why are we calling her the Catwoman? What's the name of that race? How about if we get back to the topic? We're on Batman What's here. What's the topic, Lance? We're talking about the inner light. The inner light. Okay, well, what do you have to say about the inner light? 
Say something, Lance. <laughs> You're the moderator. You bring up something. Okay, well, I want to know if there's any problems, if you saw any scriptural problems or if any directorial problems with this episode. No, but I did. S I have one point to raise about the probe. Shut up. <laughs> I have one point to raise about the probe, and that is these people have got to be stupid, and they deserve to die if they sent out a probe that would kill the person that's trying to contact if anybody interfered. <laughs> that's true. The probe that they, that they use, it, they tried to separate Picard, who are, has maybe half a lifetime of memory at this point, they try to separate him, and the probe's going to let him die. He's going to kill him because they're separated. Uh, now, he's the only one who has any memory of their race at all, and they're going to just kill him because they're trying to separate him. That doesn't make sense. You're completely right about yeah. that. Yeah. As far as the evolution Bonehead goes, head maneuver they deserve, the side, yeah. in the grand scheme of the universe, they deserve to die because they couldn't evolve past the steps to get off the planet and because they created something that would potentially kill the only thing well, that could, oh, so, so they could maintain the memory of their existence. You're talking social Darwinism here. They should die because they, they're not smart enough. Basically, well, they, had no, right. they had no instinct for self-preservation. Hmm. Okay. Five years of drought turned into, what, 25 years of drought and they still didn't do More anything? More than that. That's right. Oh, well, what could they do? I don't see us here in California doing anything. Mm -hmm. We have the same problem. It's probably going to turn into 25 Administration years Administration problem? Okay, another, another problem I saw writing-wise was that, do you remember when Picard was told the name of the, the planet? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, uh, not the Federation. He like, couldn't, you know, he didn't recognize the name of the planet. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Uh, well, look what happens in, comparison, in contrast to Geordi. Really, I'm, I'm quite all right. Just answer me. What planet? This is the planet Catan. Catan. Not a Federation planet. Any way to extrapolate an origin? Looks like a star system in the Solarian sector. Catan. Never heard of it. David? It is an unmapped system of six planets, sir. Can you believe that? How did Geordi know? Riker didn't know. Data kind of could figure out what the system was about based on the telemetry. Geordi's a genius. I guess. Better he's than got extra storage. He's got uh, memory storage in his visor. Oh, he was probably just reading a manual the night before or something on it. That's he's right. Just he, just, uh, he just boned up on the technical right. manuals. He's talking just looking about through the star charts or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they, 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 reading they didn't couldn't get a date. So hanging right. out in the planetarium in the holodeck. Yeah. Uh, well, we... Do you agree with my supposition that there was never any contact before this mm -hmm. with the uh, members of the race of people that lived on... Right. Yeah, how could there be? Okay. Dead for Why did years. they have the same name for their planet as the Federation? Oh, well... How could that happen? The sun went nova. Everything died. The sun went nova, what, 2,000 years ago? They didn't have the same Something name. Like You've got to remember ago? that when we're... When we're in Star Trek, you're not, uh, when, when, when away teams are down and when anybody's down on a planet, that those people are talking, speaking in a completely different language, and it's the universal translator. An implant, universal yeah. translator. Right. Mm -hmm. so, and? So Picard, they're they're speaking dreaming as Cayman, did not have a universal implant. Then how did they speak to him? I don't know. That universal translator and manipulated his memory, his uh, okay, the no that's molecules. Okay, that's what they did. So when, he, when they said the name of their planet, wasn't necessarily the same thing that Geordi said, but so that we, the audience, knows what it is, oh, they so show Picard's memories in English, which they're not in, right? Well, Picard has never heard of it, though. Why would it be the same thing that Geordi has heard of? Well, it's not. Mm -hmm. What we see uh, uh, his wife telling Picard is... Uh, it wasn't his wife. Who was it that told him that? It was Bataille. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, um, he just watched it. Yeah, that's right. Well, um, Bataille, when he told him that... <laughs> Um, when he told him that, he wasn't speaking it in English. I mean, they just manipulated Picard. In fact, he wasn't speaking it at all. It's just memory. It's just how Picard is remembering it. When I he's don't know. I don't have a better explanation, but I think this is kind of weak. Well, I mean, I agree that memories don't have to take place. You don't necessarily remember words. You can remember concepts and translate right, those exactly. into words of your own. But I just think that that was kind of that was. And if I could speak that way in concepts, you'd have no trouble understanding me. I think this is just another error. Yeah, to me, this is a, a small plot hole. You know, there's. I don't think that Jordy should have. Uh, he could have just as easily said, uh, "We've traced it to a a, a, si uh, a six planet system." Right. This, and then Data could have said, "The sun went novus a thousand years ago." There okay. were no survivors. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that would have been just as easy. Now, By the way, do you no have way. the name of the writer to, 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 to write in? and have No, I don't have the, the name of the writer. Week. There were 14 of them this time. Yeah, that's <laughs> it right. It was a uh, teleplay by 14 people and uh, based on a short story by this other person, uh, co-written by a third person. Who knows? Mm -hmm. 
Dreamed up the, by Roddenberry. That's right. The uh, the director was Peter Lauritsen, though. Well, what did you How did you feel about the direction? The, the director was much better this time than last time, but they had an excellent actor to work with. I mean, it's easy to be a good director when, you're, when your actor's that great, mm -hmm. Patrick Stewart. And when he's around to give you all kinds of directions in return. Yeah. Because I'm sure all he had to do was say, well, okay, here's the general idea, and Picard, or Stewart could have taken over from there. Yeah. Yeah. He knows more yeah. what to do than I'm sure Lauritsen does. <laughs> well, it could be. Lauritsen's pretty knowledgeable about the whole thing. I mean, mm -hmm. he's one of the producers. Right. You know, he's, he's real up on everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But as far as not just some Joe Blow that the they character. got off of, you know, Falcon Crest or the Love Boat to direct this show. Okay. <laughs> 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 we have our uh, primetime soap fan over here. Uh, <laughs> one thing I didn't like about this episode, which is something I don't like about a lot of episodes, is that people die too quickly. His wife Elaine, when she died, she died too quickly. It was like over and like that. Why don't we see any l slow lingering deaths with a lot of pain? They didn't mm -hmm. have time for that. They had to get in all this 40 years of stuff in one hour. They couldn't do it all. Okay. Well, the thing I liked a lot about it, we were talking about, was this actually, uh, did, we, did he experience the whole lifetime memories or selected bits of it? Yeah. I think it would have had to been the whole lifetime because he knew at the end how to play that flute. Right. He must have gone through the same learning process that, that uh, Kamen, Kamen yeah. had. Right. Mm -hmm. So at least for that much. And Even he though Kamen never learned to play. He did eventually. Oh, at his, after his wife's death? No, before his wife's death. Remember he, remember he played at his son's uh, naming ceremony. Oh, that's right. And he was pretty good at that time. And at the end, Picard... Okay, uh, yeah, he'd gotten better. But yeah, he'd gotten better. It, it still th sounded like there were some errors. Some weak some notes. Yeah. Well, at the end, Picard... I mean, that was flawless. I thought that was a beautiful melody that he mm -hmm. was playing. Very lonely and mournful. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the man. Just like the man, except the man's been touched with joy of a family. Mm -hmm. We have, to, we have yet to see. And sorrow at the loss of the family. Yes, and joy at refinding the family. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone through so much in this one hour. He's gone through more than You're any right, other character. There is so much meaning in this, and I just missed it the first time around. The f I think they should force retirement on him. I'm sorry. That's my opinion. Well, now he's the most experienced person in all of Starfleet. Okay, then you he should, go to, he should go to the Admiralty. And the only, sta only thing in the way of him going to the Admiralty that I can see... Admirals just sit on their butts and don't do anything. They want him is out that, there. Is that every field officer was killed in the Borg War. <laughs> 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 Except for the crew of the Enterprise. That's the only reason I can see him not being promoted right away to the Admiralty. They'll, they'll put some paper pushers out there. They'll promote him, them past captain, past lieutenant, yeah. because all they can do is push papers. But Picard's too valuable out in space. That's right. Exactly. That's right. I can see that. More so than ever now. Right. He's dealt with more than anybody you know, outside of a Vulcan, well, some long-lived Vulcan. And he with. and he's he's the only one that we know of his mind melded so completely with the Vulcan, mm -hmm. and not any Vulcan, Sarek. The so Vulcan. Vulcan. Okay, so now he's got forty years of experience on another planet and another person's memories, the lifetime of Sarek to draw upon. <laughs> That's right. And maybe even Spock because Spock uh, melded with him. That's correct. The, the man is a dude. So, do we have any questions? This guy is just too Lucundus valuable. Too. This guy is just too valuable. He ought to be advantaged to the Admiralty. He's instead. too dangerous in space. Valuable. Too. Yeah. What do you mean? You don't put people that that's are valuable in the Admiralty. Hey. That's hey, that's where hey, you hey. put them when you want to put them let's, out to. Let's leave this for another show. We've got to got to be going now. So I'd like to thank you both for your insightful comments and this such informed dialogue that we had here tonight. I'm sure all of you out there just loved it to death, as I did. I want to thank you for thanking us. Hey. Thank you for thanking me for thanking what you. What is this, a mutual gratification? And show? thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with another episode of Trek This Week. Good night.